first of all, I have to say that you know I'm very disappointed with the uh, with the uh, the way uh, AIDS has been handled in Uganda. Um, first, it came out. It, it's always been a disease of of fear. Um, mm -hmm. The first time we got to know about AIDS was uh, we had this very American advert on our television that goes by the year 2000. No one would be alive, and the, you know the ad was showing skeletons and. People, you know, the deadline was basically the year 2000. Yeah. So, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, we were all terrified that, you know, we were not going to see the year 2000 or beyond. Uh, this was 1985, 86. Um, and since then, you know, it's been a disease of fear. Um, it's, it's been uh, put that way. And then all of a sudden, after creating so much fear, then we had uh, very first, the very first person we had as a public display uh, the first, the, the person who became the face of AIDS in Uganda was a musician called Fidel Retire, who, uh, who came out and said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm HIV positive, and he was a very popular musician. And then people actually saw, okay, oh my goodness, this is what actually the disease does to people. And after seeing him and people being emotionally attached to his music, uh, then it, be it became believable that, oh, this, this is a very, very serious disease. Mm -hmm. And after that, now it became uh, the people who were then reported to have AIDS were really treated like outcasts, terrible, ter terribly treated like outcasts. Um, as a consequence? Was, yes, as a consequence. Uh, uh, you know, because everybody was dreading to catch the disease. People were not speaking. As in, it, it, it reached an extent where, uh, you know, um, there was a lot of misinformation. Uh, some people believing if you just stood next to a person who's, who's got HIV or some then there were rumors of uh, tomato sauce has blood in it mm. uh, you know it's all these kinds of crazy things and then people stop using tomato sauce for, for a long time and then uh, there was there was a lot of stigma then and people continue to die and there was this all you know, all 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 we need is love. All we need is understanding. All we need is care. You couldn't say care then, when everybody was terrified and stigmatized by what was going on. Um, and then in the you know towards ninety six over there, uh, some drugs started showing up, and the rich, of course, uh, go, you know knew how to survive. Mm -hmm. It was then it be slowly by slowly with the introduction of drugs and all that, it became more of a poor man's disease and then slowly by slowly the people who have been on drugs now started having all these other effects were coming up. Uh, what do I have to say about AIDS, the AIDS situation in Uganda? Uh, away from what has been said about the drugs and everything, I just think that this whole thing is really, whatever it is, it's a real big business. My biggest disappointment, like I said, and this will always be my biggest disappointment, is that it, uh, you know, we have we have thrown away all independent thinking, mm. and everything is being dictated and coming downstream. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, dictated by by uh, World Health Organization, United Nations. Uh, well, I like to say pharmaceuticals because I know they, they you know, uh, I, my my philosophy is. It, in the midst of any crisis, identify the, benef the beneficiary, and then you know what's behind it. So it's like they're the biggest beneficiaries, really. At the end of the day, we pay the pharmaceuticals to, to get these drugs you know, going. Um, my, biggest, my biggest disappointment is they have not allowed independent thought. They have not allowed, they don't allow challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I hate it when the media is trained on how to report on HIV. I say, in every reporting, in every radio news bulletin, television uh, newscast, mm -hmm. or, or, or newspaper story, they start with a when they start a sentence with um, HIV. The next sentence is the virus that causes AIDS, and no one has ever stopped to challenge that sentence alone. He says, "Are you sure about that?" So, like, what if the man died of malaria? <laughs> you know. Yeah. We're in Africa. You could have so many other things, uh, you know. Uh, we have we have diseases that are not even known. I mean, somehow, you know, uh, I know the people here because of the the hubs that they're exposed to and all those things. Somehow, we we know how to 
we've lived through it, our immunity system has always been up there. Mm. But now with the introduction of all these drugs that are making people, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but man, it, it, is, it is really an ugly situation. It almost looks good when they come across as though they're being very helpful. It looks nice. Yeah. Oh, it's a big donation from the United States government is giving this amount of money for this and this and this and this and say, wow, that is good. And you're like, yes, for treatment of this to help the suffering people mm -hmm. in Africa. And the drugs bring more suffering to Africa. And, and you ask yourself, okay, so what did the people die of? Or they died of medical experience. Sorry. They died of the drugs that they were taking. Mm. Given, sorry. Um, and you ask yourself, well, was, the, was it about helping? Or was it about finding a place to try out new markets? Experimental drugs. Experimental drugs. What was this? And that's, that's, that's what pains me. What hurts me a lot is that a lot of people here who have tried to bring up like their own remedies to mm. the problem, yeah. they have been shut up, they have been imprisoned, they are dismissed. As soon as they start to speak, they are never given a chance. Mm. And you ask yourself, wait a minute, if this is a problem, we should allow to hear, you know, I think the logical thing to do would be to listen to other possible solutions. So like if one solution, if you've offered one solution, don't shut everybody else up. They say, oh, this is the way it shall be. This is the way it should be. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the real, um, the sad side to it. Um, and, you know, you can't speak about it because the people involved are a bit too organized. One, one day I made a statement. I said, if, if someone found a cure to AIDS, There'd be a lot. Of, there'd be a lot of. There'd be a lot of unemployment in Africa. That one day, it'd be like the cure to AIDS would create a credit crunch in Africa. <laughs> Why? Because then everybody, then, then all all the organisations and the buildings and, the, and and all the structures that have been set up to manage this one disease out of the yeah. so many of it, so many diseases there in the world will all of a sudden be unemployed. Yeah. And as a result of that, everybody has to protect their job. Even people who know better will not speak out because they'd be like, man, do you know how much per diem I get for just going up country to, to, to carry out voluntary testing and counseling? Yeah. You know, in, in a four-wheel drive that's air-conditioned and everything is being paid, all expenses paid trips. And how much would that, what would that figure be? Well, um, most of them are getting at, 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 you know, comfortably, I'll put it at a thousand pounds, say, for someone who's, uh, uh, you know, who's, who's doing work for now. To conduct a, yes, a, a yes. program for, for a limited yes. amount of time. And, and most of them are usually project-like. So uh, a project could have a lot of money because, uh, you know, it has been uh, provided by foreign donors. So it really depends on how good your ideas are. Um, there was one very annoying project. Um, I say annoying because of the outcome. Um, they said they were going to um, to provide uh, um, to provide uh, money, supporting income and mm -hmm. money and uh, support for people who who went to test and found they were positive. Mm -hmm. So uh, they went to this village and found all these people who you know kindly asked them yeah let's go for, let's go test let's go test mm. and a big majority of them were negative and a few who were positive were given uh, money to, to to look for affordable housing uh -huh. uh, they were given food allowances and basically given this very good treatment and this is in a very poor place where what, what, what was being offered was really a dream type of lifestyle. As a result, there were people in the villages who went pleading for anybody who had HIV to help them, infect them. This is a true story. And as a result, they would go back and test just so they could get the benefits. 
these things have been happening in this country. And you ask, you, you know, you, you wonder what the effect is. Um, they've been preaching um, the, to us, ABC, abstinence, be faithful, and seize user condom. That's the strategy that has been mm -hmm. used here. Um, and at one point, the, it was like, there was a lot of noise being made about using use of condoms, use of condoms. Mm -hmm. What happened was, I'll give you an example, in my high school, um, I, I took a very long time. I grew up in a single-sex school, so I, I was not like really exposed to say, like females. I wasn't exposed to girls. And what happened is, uh, when I joined the university and you know got mixed up with everybody else, mm -hmm. uh, this, um, there was a health company, health service provider, that came door to door in our, in our, in our, in our un university hostels. Mm -hmm providing us with boxes of condoms and saying, Happy Valentine's Day. I mean, some of us who were probably uh, naive mm -hmm. from, from, you know, sexually naive, yeah. were given ideas with these boxes. You're like, okay, what do you do with this? And then our curiosity grew, and before we knew it, half the people who, who received those boxes felt they had to put them to use, mm -hmm. even when they did not want to. So the question is, was the campaign meant to encourage the behavior or was it there's some of these things that have you know had a reverse effect yeah and i i mean i just wonder what the motive is sometimes you stop and ask yourself was this something that was well thought through or did someone really think that what the after effect would be or mm. was it uh, you know something that was unforeseen mm. and and probably a bad mistake that shouldn't be repeated. Uh, these are all the things that have been happening. Um, I don't know if I... Um, I, I want to ask you a question. Yes, that, um, you, You're familiar with the, the phenomenon known as discord in couples. Yes. Yeah. Uh, researchers, uh, orthodox researchers and experts mm -hmm. are baffled mm -hmm. to this day as to what, what, why why HIV negative people yes. um, fail to zero convert yes. after being exposed, yes. being exposed for several years, yeah. um, and yet it, did you did you come across any evidence? You, you mentioned that uh, in the north there were people who were unprivileged who were trying to get themselves infected. Yes. Did you, did you come across any evidence to show that certain underprivileged people were did zero convert? Well, um, and who were known to be to be uh, antibody negative beforehand? It, it, it is very that the issue of discordant couples is still, I think, the greatest mystery in in uh, this phenomenon called AIDS mm. uh, because. It is it is very common. Um, at one at one time, it was put at uh, sixty forty. Yeah. Chances uh, of uh, sixty sixty to forty chances that uh, uh, you have a, a you know a, a you have the one person one partner negative and the other one yeah zero combating yeah to, you know as a result of exposure or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, I still don't understand it. But, uh, because you have, and I know, I know couples personally yeah. who have lived together for over 10, 15 years mm. where one partner is you know, positive and the other one is negative and they've still yeah. gone on to have kids. And I don't know how to explain that. I don't know how the medical people explain that. Well, what, what, what would you think uh, if you were to listen to top researchers mm -hmm. and experts in their field? Yeah. Um, saying that HIV simply isn't sexually transmitted at all, and that the, the, all the studies of discordant couples conducted all around the world mm -hmm. actually are the compelling evidence collectively that HIV is not sexually transmitted. Well, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I, I think I would very quickly subscribe to their their argument because it, it makes more sense than what we have here, already Because when people say, you know, um, as it is, some people have this and some people have that. Some of these explanations sound like religious dogma to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 
you know, I, I listen and I say, you're medical professional. You, you can't give us, you, you, you can't fail to explain, uh, you, know, you, you, you know, there's a disease. Mm -hmm. By the time you identify the disease, I'm sure there's certain things you know about it. Yeah. And uh, if, if, if the certain streams that I know, if there are certain um, things that don't make sense, then mean you probably did not understand the disease very well, or it's not a disease at all. Yeah, so if you're saying HIV causes AIDS and you can't explain it to the end, mm. uh, then maybe it is not HIV. You need, to, you need to go back again and find out why this is. Could it be a disease or is it a condition? Is it what is it? Mm. Um, and I, I think there's a very big difference between a virus and um, immunosuppression. Um, we we have since since uh, since uh, vaccinations and immunizations were introduced in in sub-Saharan Africa, we had our own diseases and all that. Uh, but we we started to see certain things that we didn't see before. Cancer was very unknown in Africa. In fact, the very first case of cancer that was registered was in in the early 1920s uh, here. The very first case of a heart attack was in the 60s. It, those before that, those were not, you know, common illnesses. People did not die of a heart attack. People died of uh, probably a fever or, or, or a running stomach or yeah. you know, yeah. bad hygiene. Um, did Did you know that there are 70 conditions uh, in the medical literature that can that cause positive results on a HIV antibody test? 70 yeah. conditions? Yeah. Wow, I um, didn't know that. And not one of those conditions is HIV. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, they, that's... They include, con conveniently, they include TB, malaria, pregnancy, hepatitis and leprosy. Pregnancy? Flu and flu vaccination. I beg your pardon? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I, I didn't know that. I, that. That is like... Then I think we... The world has been lied to. The world has been lied to, and I, you know, I, I think this, this hoax or this big, big, big lie needs to be put to an end mm. at some point. Really, as if, if a, a pregnancy test really can get a positive test, there's a problem. Not a pregnancy test, but an HIV test. An HIV test, right? Yeah. Um, con considering that mm -hmm. uh, as a. As a, as a potential fact for a moment, yeah. that might explain why uh, people at landing sites, uh, marketplaces, and prostitutes and policemen uh, would tend to have a high frequency of testing positive. Ah, okay. And it, and it would. It's occurred to me that it's strange, since since the AIDS or orthodoxy is promoting AIDS as a disease for all. Yes. In that it doesn't discriminate. Yeah. Why there's no, uh, there are no clinics being set up at outside Shoprite in Kalagala mm -hmm. or at um, in places like Rock Garden and yes. Garden City. Yes, it is. It is. Um, well, I'm still in shock. <laughs> you just shocked me with the 70. Yeah. That I did not know. That was completely new to me. Uh, I've, I've been doing a lot of uh, you know, research and I'm not, I'm not a medical person mm. but you know I, I like to read a lot of literature and I try to, to, to understand what is going on out there in the world and who's, mm. who's saying what and, and it's very unfortunate that the, the people who have the most logical explanations are being shut up mm. and are not given a chance to, to, to air their views uh, by people who are benefiting from sponsorships of research and and funds to, to carry out research, yeah. and the research can go on forever and ever. But you know, we at what cost? Yeah, at what cost? I think that I think there needs to be a, a real self self searching of the heart on the side of the medical world, and they need to go back to find uh, you know to, to what the real purpose of medicine is. Is it to heal or to uh, to uh, enslave, mm. you know, people who on, on prescription drugs for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you Sorry about that. 
Okay. You, you told me last time yeah. in, in some detail how the the the, the, the global fund fraud yes. uh, panned out. What what's what, why it why it was actually a fraud, and and you told me some things that I, I've not been aware of. Well, the, the exchange rate, it's, for example. Well, we, you know, it is it is interesting, and this is uh, we we had a commission of inquiry here that uh, you know threw some light on things that we probably would have never known about in, in our lives. Um, this is what happened. We had money sent in a global fund. A global mm-hmm. fund is, uh, I think, it's it's like a pool of funds from from, from the, the big economies of the world mm-hmm. uh, to to help uh, to help. Uh, countries that are suffering from uh, tuberculosis, malaria, HIV and AIDS. Yeah. And uh, it is, each country is allocated a certain amount of funds and it comes from uh, a global fund. I think, uh, I, I, I don't know where the headquarters are, but I'd imagine it's from one of the Swiss banks. So mm. this is what happens. When this money is... Uh, Dispensed is the right word. When it's given, yeah, when it's distributed to the, the African countries, um, it then gets in the hands of the government or the health ministry, and you know, um, then people have to plan for it. But it's from the time it is uh, allocated to the time when it's actually given. Mm. Um, you have people preparing projects and all these ideas of how they're going to have this money distributed and they're asking people for their proposals and all these organizations are strategizing for how they're going to tap into these funds. People set up NGOs uh, to, to, and charities to, to benefit from this fund. Now, the politicians also strategically have been doing this uh, and this was according to that report. They locked into a... Into a the exchange rate. This is how it works. This is how the fraud works. Mm. Um, I am a politician. I strike a deal with the bank. I speak with the bank manager. Mm. I am I am the person representing the ministry, or I am the person who's basically handling this fund. Yeah. This is big business for your. This is a big account for your bank because it's uh, you know it's fifteen billion US dollars, and you're going to be handling this over the next four or five years. Um, that automatically makes you, uh, your, your, your assets go up by, you know, the, the, your, your value as a bank goes up. Uh, this is what I want in return. One, this money is in US dollars or it's in euros or it's in uh, pounds. Mm. Um, it's, it has to be exchanged into, say, Uganda shillings. And uh, the exchange rate, as far as we're concerned, is currently this, but I want it at this. That is step number one. So if 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 uh, I don't know what example to give, but if the exchange rate is say for every ten pounds, uh, for every twelve pounds, I want you to give me ten pounds. So basically, I'm making two pounds of free exchange, um, and that in billions, of course, translates into something else. Mm. And yeah, a big majority of them make money off the exchange rate. Mm. So that is step number one. That's already like profit. Yeah, I can't explain the profit margin here because it's, it's really it's a very big figure. Mm. It's very humongous. Um, and then they keep the money on, they keep the principal amount on the account of that bank. Mm. But they put it on a fixed deposit account so that it can accrue interest while they wait for the money to be allocated. Yeah. So that could take years. It could take some time as people are trying to, uh, you know, um, to, 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 to write proposals and plans of how they're going to, you know, do all these kinds of things for mm-hmm. people with HIV and AIDS. And while that is happening, somebody is accumulating interest and they still have the money available. Mm-hmm. And when it's needed, then they'll test it and they've made a, a killing off of it. So for them, that money is very important. Yeah, it's very important. Um, 
I, I, I don't know what, it, according to the Commission of Inquiry that we had on uh, mismanagement of the Global Fund, in a nutshell, that is what was happening. Yeah. In fact, uh, somebody at the DFC, there was, there was someone at DFCU Bank who was fired as a result of that, uh, one of the banks there. Yeah. And uh, it was this confession that opened our eyes to what was actually happening, because we'd have never known that, you know, people actually make a lot of money off of exchange rates. And has he actually been punished? Uh, well, he was, uh, he, he, he lost his job, that's one thing I know. Uh, whether he was sent to jail or what, you know, those are very hard stories to follow up because, um, you know, that's sending a rich man to jail, so I do not know how far to jail he went. Mm. Uh, many times these stories are very hard to follow up. And do you think well, he was one of the bigger fish or one of the smaller ones? Uh, but he was, uh, he was a stooge. He was a stooge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you you can never tell who else was involved, but you know c clearly you can you can see that he did not have that kind of smartness. Yeah. To know that this is what you know. You you mentioned that uh, AIDS was the second biggest problem in terms of diseases in in Uganda. Yes. Um, do you think that also includes children? Um, AIDS among children? Mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly, there's, talk, there's a lot of talk about AIDS orphans, for example. And not all AIDS orphans have HIV. Mm -hmm. um, they just happen to have lost their parents. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think the last time we checked in a census, it was about 1.5 million uh, estimated yeah. AIDS orphans. Um, is it the same problem with the children? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. But at least according to the stories that we have and the, the statistics that we have available, uh, it is not. Uh, actually, the, 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 the number one killer is malaria yeah. uh, among young children. Yeah. And that is, uh, I, I think, where the, the attention for most health workers has been concerning children. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, the, the talk about HIV and AIDS is usually minimized to oh we're dealing with the orphans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it's still a mystery though. Um, the mystery is how if a child is born of two HIV positive parents and is born negative, mm -hmm. um, and and AIDS is sexually transmitted, how did the child survive the AIDS? Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, in in a in a survey report from the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, yes. uh, 2007, uh, so-called AIDS for children is is put down at six percent. But according to a reliable source of mine, that figure is actually should be two percent. Um, two percent. And in in the case of mild May. Um, they take in a lot of children who are clear, clearly malnourished and they give them food and, and, and they look after them. But they only look out, they only take in the, the, the two percent who are deemed to be HIV positive. All the others are discharged. And yet uh, other diseases, the, the other diseases that children suffer and die from, as you said, malaria. Yes. Followed by meningitis, yes, meningitis followed by yes, pneumonia and, yeah. and perinatal conditions. Yes. And then pneumonia. Yeah. They all occur among the two percent who are deemed to be positive. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're exactly the same. Yes. Clinically. Yes. The only difference is ninety eight percent test negative and they're they're discharged. Yes. And when I asked this doctor from my own mate, uh, what happens? He told me they're discharged, they're sent back to the parents. I said, What happens if they don't have the parents? He said they're discharged anyway. Because they don't they, they don't have a positive test. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this this is just one aspect that conspires to mainstreaming AIDS. Mm. And I've noticed in my long visits here that AIDS is being mainstreamed through various health facilities and authorities, and but also through schools, yes. even primary schools, the church, uh, even co 
cultural events. Yes. Yes. Is uh, do you see any end to it? Uh, and it's even being mainstreamed through food programs now. Yes. Yes. Um, no, I don't see an end to it because, uh, you know, if you asked tomorrow uh, anybody who has graduated in social work at the university where they would like to work, would you like to go and help them? Would you like to feed the hungry or join, uh, what's it called again, um, World Vision mm. and probably distribute this? Or would you like to work for, for an AIDS project? Um, you'd have a very big majority going for the AIDS project because the chances of getting more money are mm. higher with the AIDS project than here as well. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the reasons why it's easier for, for it to be mainstream now because it's now looked at as, as uh, actually one of the biggest employers we have today is, is uh, the AIDS Incorporation. <laughs> it is the biggest employer we have today. Uh, you. In, even in the hospitals now, you know, you the, most doctors are being forced to change their specialty and, uh, because of the demand that there is mm. to know. Uh, once I spoke to a doctor who told me that the, the world has not been the same since since HIV joined medicine. That's the word he said. And was he saying that with a smile on his face? Yeah, he's saying it, yes. He said since uh, 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 HIV joined, since AIDS joined, joined medicine. Yeah. And you yeah, all laughed about it. But, you know, I think about it later on and I'm thinking to myself, he's actually very right. Our world has not been the same. It hasn't. Yeah. You know, um, I have a, someone I know comes to Uganda. Yes almost annually. He's been coming here since 1988. Wow. Uh, he's now 54. Mm -hmm. He comes here for, with the express purpose of having uh, sex with prostitutes from Kavalagala. Yes. And um, I couldn't, I have not been able to help wondering if, how many girls he's been with, been with so yes. far mm -hmm. in his life. Yeah. And if he ever uses condoms, because yeah. I would imagine that many of the girls would be pregnant. Yes. So I got his comp. We've been meeting, and I got his confidence to share information yeah. with me. And just lately, he told me that he couldn't give me an answer to the number, mm -hmm. but he gave me some clues. Yeah. Uh, and roughly, he has sex with about fifty on each visit. Right lasting a month. Wow, well, <laughs> 50 years. He doesn't, he's never used condoms. Wow. Well, and he's not, he's not getting sick. Wow. Well, that's the other irony of our so-called disease. Um, the fact that, you know, you have, every hospital has, has been dictated to on what and how to handle the media has been controlled on how to report mm. on the disease. Mm. Uh, when you go to do a, a test, there, there are certain set guidelines and standards for the laboratory people. Mm -hmm. um, it, is, it, is, it is such a very funny, controlled... Uh, you, you just feel like this is, this is like, like a supervised religion. Mm where the you know the, the people who are supervising it just know which when to push which buttons yeah and you know it's like it's like a whole orchestrated thing that just i don't know how to describe it but you know every time i hear this information and all that i'm like oh this is the new button now so like i wonder what's coming up next the next thing so like oh now the pain is used prevent uh mother to child transmission mm. and uh, well you go to other doctors and they tell you, no, if you actually had a cesarean birth, you don't need to use nevirapine in order to prevent mother-to-child transmission because the baby does, does not. And, and you, you hear all these very conflicting views. Mm. I'm not a medical person, but I ask myself, do these people ever stop and hear each other? You know, like stop and say, okay, you all read from the same books or you all read from the same principles. Mm. Can you just challenge yourself based on what you, both, you all know? Yeah. Let both parties hear each other out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
it seems often so that, that, they... that guy doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. He'd be like so many others I know in the city who also just wonder what, what it is. We even have, we, we have, we have doctors who live a crazy lifestyle of, of, of taking, uh, taking ARVs in a prophylactic way where they know they're going to go out and they take the drug now mm. and they go on a rampage. Really? Yes. They, they, they know that, they're you taking know, their own drugs. Yes, they take their drugs and then they go on a rampage. So that more like if, if there's such a thing, if I'm going to catch anything, then I've already taken a drug. So Because they, they, they believe that HIV is so transmissible and but they prefer, they prefer to take the pills and use condoms. Yes, yeah. 